Hey folks, Worldwide DJ Freebird here. We're live at the CRS 2013 in beautiful downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Now folks, all of you know America's Freedom Broadcast Radio is all about supporting our troops. And if it wasn't those men and women over there doing what they do for us, we would not be sitting here doing what we do day in and day out, right here sitting with us live today. 30 year anniversary, God bless the USA, Mr. Lee Greenwood. Brother, thank you so much and appreciate the honor of having you here on our show. Thanks, great to be here. Great to be talking to the troops out there. Yeah. Uh, just uh, hope you guys all stay safe, you know. You, Wish you were here with us. Absolutely. You've done so much in your career. I mean, Grammy Award winning, country music singer. Uh, your discography includes 22 studio albums, counting two Christmas albums. You've got, uh, what is it, 38 singles, counting the hit single song, God Bless the USA. I mean, you've been busy in your career, but you've done a lot of stuff in your career that really supports our men and women through your music in more ways than you know that are in military and in military families. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know that we started working for the USO when I was about 14. I'm originally from California, and in Sacramento, uh, where I was raised, we had McClellan and Mather, and Mather Air Force bases right near me. And so as a young teenager, I had my band, and we'd go out and play dances you know, at dark. the air bases, and that would be a little money for the weekend. You know, I could buy some socks or you know, underwear or something. And uh, my bass player in the band was a, uh, Air, Air National Guard. So we had to take a week off a month we couldn't work that that week because he had to go to training. So I recognized right away there's a sacrifice here. You know why? Why don't people recognize this more? And uh, throughout the years, of course, we began working for the USO again when I got to Nashville, which is almost 20 years. And that during that 20 year time, I was honing my craft and career in Nevada, because mm -hmm. Nevada is the neighboring state. That's where the money was, the casinos were, and I went there to work and I did, and it was very successful. Anywhere from playing piano bar to having a 10 piece band backing up big reviews, working alongside the major acts. And, uh, and kind of getting an idea of what it was like to be in that next level. And when I got to Nashville, I started my USO tours again. So we've done 30 of those since then. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I did a lot for the USO in benefits called a soldier's call home. Mm -hmm. And I raised money to purchase international calling cards to send to the troops during the oh, Christmas good. holidays. Good. In your career, uh, back sitting on the telling your bus, when you first wrote God Bless the USA, how long did it take for that to really come to light for you? couple hours. You know, I, I had thought about it an awful long time, uh, to tell you the truth. And, uh, you know, you think about something that you want to write or record, and sometimes you get into a studio and you go, well, this isn't quite right. I'm going to do this again next week. But there was no doubt that when this, this song came to me about, um, I guess, 1982, I, I finally wrote it in 1983. But I was touring, I was touring 300 days a year. Wow. As an MCA artist, and I was there with Reba McIntyre and George Strait and the Oak Ridge Boys and Barbara Mandrell, and uh, we were just turning out products. See, the deal about recording in those days, you turned out two albums a year. Right. So you'd get 30 or 40 songs, record an album. 30, 40 songs, record another album. And I usually wrote one or two for every album, so you can see how much strain that was on us to, to make that kind of schedule. And yeah. I was there like, let's see, 14 years at MCA, so we a lot for a lot of music. And, yeah, that's to keep up with your contract issues. Yeah, yeah, so. because, and they've gone keep signing and keep signing until we finally were done there. You know, we went out to Capitol Nashville uh, and recorded American Patriot over there along with mm -hmm. two other hit albums, A Perfect Tim and and, uh, and Holding a Good Hand. But all, all of the albums we had at MCA were, were cool and, and, and great music. Um, USA was a little bit different. And as you said, how long did it take me to write it? You know, the emphasis for writing a song sometimes can be a couple of days. You wake up in the morning, you got a title, you go to the, the music company, and you and a couple other guys write it in about an hour. I'd thought about this for a long time, and, uh, and I said it was just time to do it. And I'd already had five or six songs on the charts, five or six albums, and it was time to, to write it. And so in 83, I came up with it, and 85 was Song of the Year in Nashville. Uh, it began to be America's most recognized anthem, and now here I am. You know, I sing it all the time on my road shows. I probably do 100 days a year on the road, and I still recognize that the commitment of the military is much more important than what I do. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, it's, it's a big inspirational song, and there's no doubt about it. And, you know, congratulations on that, because not a lot of people in the business over the years, going back to either. Even Hank Jr. or Elvis Presley, I mean, had come up with something as great as this. I mean, this is a really iconic song that everybody can relate to, and it's so perfectly put together, word you know, for word. If you're an artist and you have one song to represent you, mm -hmm. what is it? You know, if you hear, remember this lick? That's the opening lick from Hotel California. Oh, okay. If you're the Eagles, that's your calling card. Right. You know, the Beach Boys, mm -hmm. their 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 music. Margaritaville, right. Jimmy Buffett. 
Okay. My yep. calling card is God Bless USA. My grandparents said to me years ago, if you're ever going to do anything important, make sure it's something you're going to be proud of the rest of your life. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So, you know. And you've you got to be proud of that. Yeah, I have a lot of other songs I've written and a lot of music I've produced. And, uh, of course, I'm in, you know, those record books and history books in country music that has established me as one of those artists that did a lot for country music. But beyond that, God Bless USA is so national. Well, I've basically grown up to listening to Lee Greenwood. Cool. So I had a guy who was singing with me for a while. He was a Belmont graduate. I saw him in his, in his recital when he graduated. His name is Gordon Moat from Alabama. Wow. And uh, he was a fabulous talent. And so he worked with me a number of years. He's blind, blind from birth, mm -hmm. and, uh, but an amazing, has perfect pitch and, and, and an inspiration to me. And we ended up writing a Christian album together. The, the album's called Totally Devoted to You. We wrote the song together. After he left me, he started working with the Gaither Vocal Band, and now he has his own career. Uh, he married a woman named Kim, who uh, was his college sweetheart. My wife's named Kim. He has a, a son named Parker. My son is named Parker. So uh, it's kind of cool that you know we have this association through God and through the inspiration of Christ. You know, and I know that band you just mentioned because Guy Penrod was with him and stuff. Guy you know? Penrod's a cr friend of mine. We used yep. to go to Christ Church together, and he was with the Gaithers. He also yep. now has his own career, yep. and uh, he's going to do a cruise, a by the way, in 2014. And, I mean, when, when Guy stood up in the audience one time at Christ Church and the, and the pastor asked him to sing Holy Night from the Pew, oh. and I was like, and I'm, 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 I'm about six people from him, I said, okay, I want to be Guy Penrod. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he has an amazing voice Yeah, he's well. terrific. He's he, terrific. He was out here with us last year, and, or year before last, I forget, but great, great person. Yeah, terrific and guy. Also. Well, let's talk a little bit about this one right okay. here now. I want to be in your world. That's a new yeah. one from you. It is new. It's a seven-song CD, and, uh, or they call it an EP. Uh, extended play. Um, I, I wrote four, uh, three of the songs on it, which kind of gives us uh, a look at my background, three decades of music. Um, one is called Wounded Heart, which is, I'm going to do that with the United States Air Force Band at Constitution Hall next month. Uh, there's also a song, the title song, I Want to Be in Your World, is about, you know, my sweetheart, my wife. And then um, uh, there's a song on there from Kenny Loggins and Michael McDonald that I really loved. And, Two other great artists. And my producer, Butch Baker, said, why don't we uh, get Michael McDonald to come in and play the piano for you? Because he, he originally played the piano and sang it himself. I said, on. okay. So he came in the studio. He lives right here in Franklin, Tennessee. So he came in the studio and he played it for me and I'm sitting, just the two of us. And it's, it's a single cut um, that's a, kind of like the closer for the album. So I'm, I'm proud of that. Yeah. I, I, the owner of our radio station lives out in Chester Lake, California now, but he used to live in Sevierville. Oh, really? And he met you at the Walmart oh, one my. time, and he came up and said, Hey, Mr. Greenwood, I know who you are. And you said, Well, thanks for not making a big to-do out of it. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that. His name was Rick Blackman. They called him Viper, the Viper Pit. Okay, well, you know, uh, Rick, many people who don't know where Sevierville is will pronounce it Sevierville, right. uh, knowing that the first governor of, of the state of Tennessee was John Sevier, mm -hmm. and that's why they called it Sevierville. Anyway, I'm from California originally, so uh, I can recognize, you know, the, the grace of living in that great state. Born in Los Angeles, raised in Sacramento, so... Uh, uh, thanks for having us on your station. <laughs> now, are you back in California living? Are no, you? I live here, right here in Franklin. Did I've been you? here for 30 years. I have a Tennessee bride. We've been married 20 years and two teenage sons, Dalton and Parker. This is our new book, before I go too much further. Yeah. It's called Does God Still Bless the USA? And uh, as a Christian nation, I think we need to address this subject. You know, how uh, there's been a lot of shootings in schools and stuff. Absolutely. And uh, I think the, uh, the answer to that was... People said, well, you know, how can God allow this to happen with these poor little kids? And God would say, well, you've taken me out of your school, so I can't be there to protect you. Anyway, the, the, the question may be answered in the back of the book. So go to our website, LeeGreenwood.com, and you'll find uh, Does God Still Bless USA in our new CD.